Welcome to the setup. Today I want to talk about what I wear at different times of the season. Since we're already into what I would call mid-season, I'll start with mid-season and then late season. So this is, this is how I would show up uh, most days. I'd leave my hunting camp or my house more or less dressed like this. I might have one more base layer over the top if it's really cold out, but I tend to wear as little as I can. So I've got uh, the base layer underneath these pants. So whatever I'm gonna wear, whether it's just a mid-weight for mid-season uh, base layer, or if it's something a little bit heavier, I might pull this over the top for late season. So those would both be under this really, really thin outer pant. So I'll get back to what this purpose that this uh, outer pants serves. This is, uh, the outer pants is made by Drake Non-Typical. I like it, it's just really thin material. Uh, it doesn't weigh anything but yet it will protect me somewhat when I'm walking to my tree stand. I like to carry my outerwear. I don't like to wear it in. So I gotta wear something. And early I used to go, sometimes I'd go all the way to my tree stand just in my base layers, but then you'd get all thorns and burrs and stickers and, and uh, stuff stuck on there. And that didn't work very well. So I switched over to this system where I could wear a really thin pair of pants. Uh, so that's, the, that's the, the lower section, like I said, uh, mid-season mid-weight underneath the pants, then as it gets later into the season, the mid, mid plus the heavier layer for the bottoms. Okay, for the top, normally I'm gonna start out with something like this t-shirt. You know, ideally it'd be, you know, not cotton. Anything cotton is gonna hold moisture close to your skin. This is like a tri-blend poly. Uh, that does a pretty good job. Any, any polypropylene or polyester based uh, should work fine. Then I'm gonna put over that for mid-season, just one, again, mid-layer, mid-layer of base layers. This is Cabela's stuff, and I've been a big fan of Cabela's base layers for, gosh, since I they, they started coming out with base layers. They do a really nice job of that. So you don't need to get uh, real extravagant on base layers. I know there's all kinds of like alpaca wool and stuff like that, which is really cool, merino wool. You know, Cabela's carries a lot of that kind of stuff too, but the basics are gonna be good enough most of the time. So this would be the way that I would walk in during the mid-season. I would have grabbed the, the uh, mid-weight top. I just wear a normal, you know, hunting style hat. Uh, I don't have a thermal hat walking in. Again, I carry that stuff. So throw on my gloves. And I always wear these jersey gloves. They're cheap, you can buy couple dozen of them for $30. And, uh, but they're, they're plenty uh, warm enough for most of the stuff that you do. You can always keep them in your hand warmer pockets if you need to. But I like to give you a little bit of flexibility with being able to you know, grasp things and touch things. Uh, they don't so thick that you can't feel the trigger on your release aid or you know, get the uh, arrow on the rest, uh, all those kind of things. And uh, so I'll, I'll walk in basically with what you see me wearing right now, these gloves, this uh, base layer setup. Let's move one step further. So now that was that was mid-season. So now I've got uh, a late season version of this also. There's a couple different routes I go here that I really recommend. This is a really, really, really warm garment, surprisingly, all frotty. And it's a wool garment. It's made over in Europe somewhere. Uh, this thing, it's a little bit heavy, but I don't know what it is about this. Uh, it's the warmest piece of mid clothing, mid base layers that I've ever worn. And I've got a pair for the leggings too that I wear if it gets really cold. This is just one option. I've got some other options to show you too. But So now I'm up to this for a, a later season hunt. I might not wear this walking in. I might still just go in with that very minimal, you know, early, early season type of a base layer. So I'm always gonna be wearing a, a vest. And this is an early season, mid season version. Uh, maybe not early season, I might not wear one early. But uh, I like something that's pretty thin. This one I've had forever. The zipper is a paper clip, uh, zipper pull. So you know I've had that one for a while. I like a vest because it keeps your core a little bit warmer, but it doesn't tie up your arms. So as a bow hunter, and even climbing into a tree stand, you know, you're, you're moving a lot drawing your bow, reaching for stuff. Um, you don't want to have that Christmas story, you know, I can't, 
you know, move my arms, uh, kind of a scenario going with too much bulky stuff around your sleeves. So the vest is really nice, and I've got a couple different versions. Here's another one, just a little bit heavier. Uh, this might come into play, like I said, for a late season. But this would be a mid-season setup for sure, at the most. And again, this Alfredi layer is overkill for mid-season if you've got any kind of decent outerwear at all. You know, I would say what I'm wearing right here, throw the outerwear over it, would be good to, oh, a day where it's a high in the 40s, maybe 50s, you know, a low in the upper 20s, 30s. This will get you by pretty well with some good outerwear. But then it starts to get colder than that. And that's when you start stepping into some of these other things, you know, adding that heavier layer on the bottom, adding the heavier layer on the top. Uh, here is another. Another top layer, base layer. This is the uh, Cabela's Heavyweight. And this is really nice too. I mean, they've got, like I said, tons of this kind of stuff. But my favorite for, for the mid-season kind of hunting, again, you know, where the highs are probably in the 40s, low 50s, is this little piece right here with a hood on it. I'm gonna see if I can find what they call this. But uh, I really like that little hood. It's just a pullover with a hood. Uh, ECWCS. Polar. <laughs> I guess they, they probably still make it, but let's take a quick look at that. So again, I might carry this because wearing all this, walking any distance at all, I'm going to be sweating. But once I get there, you know, I definitely want to have uh, plenty of clothes to put on because you don't appreciate how cold you get when you're sitting. If you're moving, you're generating heat, but if you sit for even three or four hours, it really starts to creep up on you. So again, you got one more layer here. I really like that hood. Surprisingly, just throwing that hood up, you know, when you start to get a little chill makes a huge difference. I just pull it over the top of my hat. Uh, it doesn't obstruct my eyesight at all. You know, it's not in the way of my peripheral vision. You know, it's still, still a really nice, uh, efficient method of, of hunting. One more. <laughs> this one, you're going to love this one. Polar Tech. It's a, another, another Cabela's. Um, real fuzzy looking. I don't even know what that is, but it's real lightweight. It's got a lot of insulating qualities to it. Uh, I've worn this a lot for later season hunts. So let's say now we're looking at temperatures maybe where the lows are going to be in the teens, maybe a bit of wind. So you got some wind chill to deal with. Maybe it's going to be a high in the 30s, maybe low 40s on stand, uh, maybe colder. That calls for some really, really serious apparel because, again, uh, when you're sitting, it really creeps up on you. So this would be a layer that I would consider for that. And I've got a top that goes with it. But, uh, yeah, it looks pretty funny. It looks like a, like a big old green and brown bear or something when you put it on. It's all furry looking, but it does a nice job. So that takes us through, that takes us through the base layers. I want to talk about footwear next, and then I'll cover the outerwear last because uh, I'm carrying the outerwear. So I want to show you sort of the progression as I'm getting ready at my truck. I will be putting on the the uh, safety harness before I, I head in. So I'm putting that on over my base layers, and then my outerwear goes over the top of that. So uh, footwear. Starting off, I've got a pair of socks that are, I'd say, mid weight mid to lightweight wool. I think it's a wool blend. And uh, again, they're Cabela's products. And it's not something that, I mean, I know you can put a lot of time and effort into, into socks and I probably don't have the world's greatest socks, but I don't want heavy ones. That's one of my keys, I think, is having something that's fairly loose inside of your boots. Because when you start to restrict your feet, uh, then you restrict the blood flow into your toes and then you, you make them get colder a lot quicker. So I always want my footwear to be a little bit loose, which means I'm going with fairly light socks. I'd rather have light socks than anything too tight. So now I get to where I'm hunting, and I've got these in a tote. And uh, pull them out, slip off whatever I was wearing in the truck. And this is just, this is an insulated boot from Cabela's. Uh, I don't even know if they make this anymore, but I would call it maybe a 400 uh, gram or 600 gram uh, thinsulate insulated version of, of their footwear. 
I don't mind wearing the Cordura nylon. Everybody thinks you gotta wear rubber. I, I have not seen that. That's been not my experience and I've been around thousands of deer, you know, crossing my, uh, my entry routes. And as long as you keep these clean, like you're not wearing them all the time everywhere you go, you can keep them in the back of your truck as long as there's not a lot of foreign odors back there. But you, you obviously you don't wanna get them into places where they're gonna pick up you know, gasoline smells and stuff like that. But the deer don't really smell your boots. What they really smell is your pant legs and they smell your, your clothing where it touches the low vegetation. They don't smell where your feet touch the ground. Uh, so yes, the rubber does make sense because you can um, tuck your pants cuffs and everything down in there, which limits at least to this layer or this level uh, how much of it touches the vegetation. But it's, you know, above that too. I mean, shoot, from mid thigh down, sometimes you're moving through brush. That's what they're smelling. So anyway, I like comfort. I like lace-up boots. I like the Cordura, Cordura, <laughs> Cordura nylon. Um, this is just a mid layer. And I would wear these almost from the beginning of the season, this, si this style. They're not so hot that I can't wear them during the, let's say, you know, early October time frame. You know, I don't put those on until I get out of the truck and get ready to hunt. So that would be early to mid season on these boots. And it doesn't take very long before I start ramping up. I, I don't like having cold, cold feet. In fact, there's three parts of your body I feel like limit your stand time. Your hands, fingers, um, your feet, and your head. You know, people don't give enough credit to how important it is to keep their head warm. But we'll come back to that when I talk about the outerwear. And I'll even be tempted sometimes to carry my, my uh, footwear, especially if I go something this heavy. And I have no problem whatsoever of wearing these boots when it's 30 degrees out, or 40 degrees even, if I'm gonna be out there for a long time. I know they look big and clunky, but boy, after several hours sitting in the tree stand, you are really happy to have these things. I would not wear them, never wear these. I always wear something really light, you know, almost like a little slip-on tennis shoe or something like that. You know, I've got some really lightweight, uh, almost like sandal kind of footwear that I would wear going in. I'd carry those, and then when I get to the tree, then I would put these on before I climb. But I wear these a lot, uh, and these are the uh, Cabela Saskatchewan pack boot. I'm sure that they're the, the warmest boots that I've ever worn. Doesn't mean they're the warmest boots on the planet, but I'll show you what they look like. <laughs> and they're, they're really comfortable. Uh, again, now I'm like really tall too, because <laughs> there's about that much insulation on the insole. But that's part of the reason why they're so warm, because when you're standing on a, on a tree stand, you're compressing all that insulation between your feet and the metal stand. And the metal stand is gonna be the same temperature as the air, and it's gonna hold that temperature. So now the bottom of your feet, the bottom of your outsoles of your boots is gonna be 20 degrees, if it's 20 degrees out. So somehow you've gotta separate that 20 degrees from the 98.6 that you want your feet to be at. So having a lot of insulation uh, down there in the footbed is super important. And that's where these really come in, that's where they shine, because you can stand in them and your feet don't get cold. A lot of times if I'm in a tree stand and my feet get cold, I have to sit down in order to you know, get them separated away from the stand, you know, let some more circulation get through, you know, kind of open up the insulation uh, down in the bottom of the boot. But with these, you don't have to do that. But once again, that's not a boot that you're gonna wear uh, when you're walking in. So that's my footwear system. It's, it's uh, pretty simple, but uh, gosh, I've hunted in some really extreme conditions and I've, I've kept my feet fa fairly warm. And I attribute that to these boots right here. If it's, if it's gonna be a high in the 30s, I'm probably gonna be in these boots. So uh, you might start looking for some real heavy boots for that, that situation. So I'm gonna move on uh, next to the outerwear. Okay, so now we've done uh, base layers, mid layers, uh, footwear for uh, mid season and late season. Now we're gonna do outerwear. And the outerwear stays the same for me. I've only got one variation of that when it gets really cold. But my mid-season and normal late season are gonna be the same. Only thing that changes is how much I layer underneath them. So again, my key to this is being able to carry this stuff. I want pants that I can zip the leg open and slide them over my boots. If I get to the tree stand before I climb, the last thing I wanna do is be standing there in the dark in the leaves changing, you know, taking my boots off, pulling my pants on, putting my boots back on. So it's important. Uh, again, I'm gonna have the, 
the system, you know, the safety system on. I might as well just kind of toss it on for show. But, uh, so I'm carrying these pants right here. And this is a really, I mean, it's, it's a pretty thick, uh, comfortable, heavy uh, Berber type wool. And this is the Code of Silence stuff that I've been working with this year. And my friend Ev Terrell is the one who designed this system. And I've known Ev from way back in the Cabela's days when I worked with Cabela's quite a bit and I worked with Ev quite a bit on their clothing there. So he's put a lot of thought into this, uh, into this Berber system. Code of Silence, you can check him out. He's starting to ship this stuff now finally. Uh, I think he's been working on it for a couple of years. And he's finally got it to the point now where it's ready to go to market. So you go to codeofsilence.com and uh, he's got several different systems there for different times of the year. This is the one, like I said, the main one for me. I love the zippered legs. So now I just pull those on. You know, I don't have to take my boots off. What am I thinking? <laughs> That's the whole point. So I can pull them on over the boot. Once I get to the base of the tree. Then it's just a matter of zipping the pants legs down. So now I'm ready to go. And he's got a stretch uh, panel in there so that it's, uh, if you want to tuck it into your rubber boots, it's going to be nice and snug to your leg. If you don't, like me, then you don't have a lot of excess material that's just flapping around in the tree. And I'm not a big fan of, of having loose material up there because it always seems like it's, you know, you're rubbing against something or something's touching something, you know, when you're moving around. So having everything compact and tight, uh, I feel like it's, you know, it's a it's quality of a, of a good system. So this is gonna be, I would say, mid to late mid season. So now we're looking at down to, uh, oh, I suppose your highs in your 40s, maybe, mid 40s, 50, 40s, somewhere in that range. Yeah, by the way, it also zips down from the top so you can get into your pockets if you do have pants on the inside like I do. So then my jacket, and Ev's got a couple of different variations of this, but I like this heavy one. Like I said, I'll wear this mid-season, but I won't layer hardly anything underneath it. It was 75 degrees yesterday when we went out to the tree stand, and it got down to probably 50, maybe while we were sitting there, 55. And this actually, with nothing underneath it, but just something thin, this actually felt pretty, pretty good. It wasn't like it was too hot. Uh, you surely weren't gonna you know, wear it in, but once you get in there, uh, this goes over everything else. Now, gosh, I'm gonna be pretty warm. Uh, worst case, I've got another hood. You know, now I can get one more layer, get one more layer up on top. You know, I, I like the system. You know, we're still talking about changes that, you know, we would like to see, you know, for generation two or whatever, you know, in the future. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a really nice setup. And he does make, uh, like I said, a number of other variations that are lighter. And I don't know if he makes anything heavier than this. Um, I don't believe that he does. So now I've got two pieces that I would be carrying in if it was, you know, mid to late mid season. But the real kind of, uh, I would say, king of the mountain when it comes to uh, late season is this insulated bib that I'm gonna pull out next. And I'm a big insulated bib guy. Even an uninsulated bib is fine with me too. But uh, I like eliminating that seam. You know, there's always that seam between your pants and your jacket. And the nice thing about Ev's setup is the uh, parka does go down a long ways. So that, that covers up that seam. But so many jacket systems, I mean, they stop at your waist and then you've got a gap there, basically between the jacket and your pants where you're just freezing. And a bib does away with that. This is a really heavy bib. You know, if I'm going in for a cold weather sit, so this would be a pure late season setup or maybe something, say, highs in the 30s with a little bit of wind. You know, I'd hate to think with highs in the 20s that there's anything that's gonna keep me real warm, but I'd put my, you know, my, my bed on this. So again, I can, you know, walk into my tree stand if I got my late season boots, you know, I'll slip those um, other shoes off, put those on. But if I don't, again, they've got the zip up legs. So I can go right through. You know, I don't have to take my boots off. That's important. 
Uh, now we're eliminating, like I said, that gap between your jacket and your pants. And this also gives you just one more layer right here in your core, which I think is really important. Uh, I'd have the same stuff on I talked about earlier for the, the uh, base layers. You know, this zips all the way down. You know, it's got a pretty good, you know, snug leg efficient design too. Some of them are just like bell bottoms and there's just so much material down there. Uh, pretty good pocket setup, front, side. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward, uh, basic insulated bib. So this would be the ultimate for really staying warm in cold conditions. So starting from the inside out, I'd have a thinner base layer, a thicker base layer, my uh, thin uh, pants that I wear walking in and out, and then I'd put this on when I got to the tree with those heavy boots. Pretty solid, pretty solid setup. Ev did uh, design the jacket with a, I don't know what you'd call it, opening, I guess, for the safety harness to go through. It's got like a little flap so it doesn't let cold air in. I can run my safety harness through that. And that's by far the, the most convenient, comfortable, and safest way to wear the harness in the tree. Because if you go out through the top and then you cinch everything up, and if you fall, it's coming right up to your neck. Because, you know, it's going to be pulling against the jacket, which is pulling against your neck. So I wouldn't do that. Before I would do that, I would just cut a hole in my in my other jacket before I'd ever run the, the safety harness strap out through the top and then zip everything up. But this is way better. You know, it's already designed to go on there. Snap this onto the, you know, the climbing ring or the safe line and up I go. So that pretty much takes me through it. You know, I try to keep all my outerwear in a separate tote. Uh, my boots can either be in a separate tote or just sitting loose in the back of the truck as long as there's not a lot of foreign odors in the truck. And then I'll put my, my uh, base layers on in camp before I leave. And uh, gosh, I've done this for, what is this? I started when I was 14. And uh, so this would be my 45th hunting season. Haven't been hunting every day of every season since then, but I've hunted an awful lot from back then to now. So 45 years, and I've really frozen. I've had some, some really bad experiences, cold experiences in tree stands. So this system has evolved over time, and I don't think it's an expensive system. I mean, even Ev's stuff is, is you know, the Code of Silence stuff is pretty affordable, you know, for what it is. The stuff from Cabela's, all those uh, base layer systems are, are pretty affordable there. Uh, you don't have to spend a fortune to stay warm. Those boots are kind of expensive though, I will say that. But I think I would shell out the cash because that makes a big difference. One thing left, and then I'm all done here. So the final touch is your head, headwear. And if it gets really cold, I mean this hat does me fine for quite a while because I can always, you know, go this route. You know, okay, now I'm two hours into the sit and I'm starting to get cold. I pull this out of my pack, you know, and slide it over. And you know, I still have my sun visor. You know, I got my ear flaps, got an extra layer around my head. That does a nice job. But when it gets really cold, this thing's gone and the face mask comes out. Uh, but no, having a face mask, and you'd be shocked how much difference this makes. You know, if I'm sitting in the tree with this thing on and then I take it off, I feel like I'm freezing. And I talked to my sister about that. She's a, she was a biomedical engineer and she went on to be a doctor. And she said that one of the things that they studied was how your head acts as a radiator and it controls the heat for your whole body. So there's a lot of heat that gets lost through your head if you don't really you know, cover it up and protect it. So now I've got the face mask and I've got this set up here. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good to go for a while now. Uh, this is, again, that's when it gets really cold. I'd say 40 degrees down, I'm wearing the face mask, but you know, if it's in the 50s or 60s, uh, I usually don't have a face mask on. Uh, that takes you through the whole system from getting out of the truck to uh, killing the buck you've been hunting all season. Sometimes it just comes down to being there 
well, it almost always comes down to being there. And the only way you can guarantee yourself more time is to wear the warmest stuff that you can when it's cold. And the deer seem like they move best when it's really cold. So those are the most challenging times to hunt. And it's hardest to put in the hours. But as long as you have a good system, uh, that's, that's the key. So that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, check out the Code of Silence line. You know, Ev's got that stuff ready to ship now. Codeofsilence.com and a lot of the rest of these pieces you can find at Cabela's. Well, I appreciate you joining me this week. We'll see you right back here again in the future for the next episode of The Setup.